And we still don't agree on getting rid of the filibuster. That's correct. Right. Thank you. I, I was, I was... It's a big club, and you ain't in it. That was positively revolting. You just watched Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema high five each other over their obstruction. They're essentially celebrating the fact that they blocked the codification of voting rights or Roe v. Wade or didn't make the child tax credit permanent in the presence of these billionaires, some of whom I assume are their donors. And it's just really gross. And it's a reminder that these politicians, they don't represent you. The people at that event are who our government represents because our government is incapable of meeting the basic needs of its citizens. And it's because they're not representing you and I, they're representing those elites at that summit in Davos. And let's be clear about something here. Even though Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema were more than happy to assume the role of rotating villain, there would be someone else to take their place in the event they weren't willing to play that part. So there's always going to be a Joe Lieberman, a Joe Manchin. There's going to be some all too powerful parliamentarian or this excuse that the Republicans won't go along with us, even though we control both branches of government. And it's because our government doesn't represent us. They represent those folks, the elites at Davos. And this is just kind of a reminder that this is the way our government operates. But it's not surprising when you live in a late stage capitalist society where if you have money, that directly translates into you having power. As CNBC reports, U.S. lawmakers quietly took part in a private ritzy lunch atop the World Economic Forum on Monday, featuring dozens of influential business leaders, according to people with direct knowledge of the matter. Lawmakers in attendance included members of the U.S. congressional delegation taking part in the annual confab for the elite and wealthy in Davos, including Senators Joe Manchin, Chris Coons, Kirsten Sinema, and a few members of the House of Representatives, these people explained. Republican Georgia Governor Brian Kemp also attended the event, one of the people said. Coons and Manchin each separately addressed the crowd of corporate leaders at the lunch, said an attendee who declined to be identified speaking about a private gathering. Coons told CNBC on the sidelines before the lunch that members of the congressional delegation were heading to the lunch with about 50 CEOs. He didn't say which executives were scheduled to attend. Now, in case you're wondering why senators like Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema, and Chris Coons were part of the U.S. delegation, well, it's because even though almost all of American politicians are beholden to their corporate donors, these are the individuals who are the most shameless about their corrupt behavior. As Patriotic Millionaires put it, Davos is the world's largest and most prestigious gathering of powerful people pretending to do good while actually protecting the wealth of the richest. Could it be any more fitting that Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin are part of the U.S. delegation? Exactly. Now, customers should point out, after Manchin and Sinema chose to stand with the Republican Party and refused to repeal the filibuster, the child tax credit expired and childhood poverty increased 41%, which meant 3.7 million more children were forced into poverty. But yeah, high fives all around. Horrid. So it's infuriating because these elitist politicians and business leaders and wealthy people, they get together, they plot and scheme about how they're going to rig the rules of the game to further benefit and enrich themselves. And if you point that out, apparently you're wrong to do that? I mean, CBS actually thought it was a good idea to put out this tweet. The World Economic Forum's annual meeting has increasingly become a target of bizarre claims from a growing chorus of commentators who believe the forum involves a group of elites manipulating global events for their own benefit. But as this Twitter user pointed out in response, they literally admit that this is what they do. He says it's literally the first paragraph on their website. It's bizarre that people believe a bunch of billionaires get together with politicians for kicks and their website reads, the forum engages the foremost political business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. It's called global capitalism. This is how things function. When you have these private lunches between business leaders, 50 CEOs, as Chris Coons estimated, and sitting senators, they're not just talking about the weather. 
They're not talking about what games they're playing and how far they got in Elden Ring. They're talking about policies that are going to further enrich them and allow them to dodge their taxes. But I want to be fair to Davos because it's not like every single thing that they produced was bad. Because in the year 2019, well, for some reason, they invited some people who were willing to call them out and confront them to their faces. And that includes historian Rutger Bregman. Need I remind you that on a stage, he actually called for taxing the wealthy in front of a lot of very wealthy people. This is my first time at Davos, and uh, and I find it quite a bewildering experience, to be honest. I mean, 1,500 private yachts have flown in here to hear Sir David Attenborough speak about, you know, how we're wrecking the planet. And uh, I mean, I hear people talk in the language of participation and justice and equality and transparency. But then, I mean, almost no one raises the real issue of tax avoidance, right? And of the rich just not paying their fair share. I mean, it feels like I'm at a firefighters fighters conference and no one's allowed to speak about water, right? <laughs> there, was, there was only one panel, actually. Thank well, we've had two. You're the second well, of well, our panelists. There, there so was only one panel. Apart let's go from this there. One. One panel hidden away in the media center that was actually about tax avoidance. Yeah. I, was about, I was one of the 15 participants. So <laughs> something needs to change here. I mean, ten, 10 years ago, the World Economic Forum asked the question, what must industry do to prevent a broad social backlash? The answer is very simple. Just stop talking about philanthropy and start talking about taxes, mm -hmm. taxes, taxes. We need to, mm -hmm. I mean, just two days ago, there was a billionaire in here, uh, what's his name, Michael Dell. And uh, he asked the question like, Name me one country where a top marginal tax rate of 70% has actually worked. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a historian. The United States, that's where it has actually worked. In the 1950s, during <laughs> Republican President Eisenhower, you know, the war veteran, the top marginal tax rate in the US was 91% mm -hmm. for people like Michael Dell. You know, the top estate tax for people like Michael Dell was more than 70%. I mean, this is not rocket science. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can talk for a very long time about all these stupid <laughs> philanthropy schemes. We can invite Bono once more, but come on, it's we gotta be talking about taxes. Yikes. That's it, taxes, taxes, taxes. All the rest is bullshit, in, in my opinion. Yeah, so he exposed all of these elitist pricks for who they are. This is nothing more than a circle jerk for elites to try to make themselves feel better while not actually addressing the elephant in the room, not actually talking about the ways in which they can better the world. And that is giving up the wealth that they're hoarding, that many of them stole from their employees through exploited labor. Now, Rutger wasn't the only individual in attendance because on that panel was also the executive director from Oxfam back in 2019. And she also said the same thing that Rutger said. But this next clip is really interesting because you're going to see some pushback once one of these elitist pricks had their bubble bursted. So you're going to hear from the CFO of Yahoo. And what he said was just perfectly illustrative of how idiotic this event is. We have a tax system that leaks so much that allows $170 billion of money every year to be taken to tax havens and to be denied the developing countries that need that money most. So we have to look at the business model and we have to look at the role of governments to tax and plow back money into people's lives. I have to say, honestly, this is a very one-sided panel. The U.S. basically has the lowest unemployment rate ever, the lowest black unemployment rate ever, lowest youth unemployment ever. Uh, we've actually reduced poverty around the world. No one's talking about that at all. So i like for the panel to talk about beyond taxes, which every one of you have talked about. The only thing you've talked about in this whole panel on inequality, mm -hmm. what can we really do to solve and help solve inequality over time beyond taxes? The gentleman who talked about, who said we've just talked taxes and that jobs are there and there's low and unemployment rates are low. Let me tell you something. We're talking about jobs, but the quality of those jobs. And we also work with poultry workers in the richest country in the world, the United States. Poultry workers. These are women who are cutting the chickens and packing them, and we buy them in the supermarkets. Dolores, one woman we work with there, told us that she and her co-workers have to wear diapers to work because they are not allowed toilet breaks. This is in the richest country in the world. That's not a dignified job. Those are the jobs we are being told about, that globalization is bringing jobs. The quality of the jobs matter. It matters. 
These are not jobs of dignity. In many countries, workers no longer have a, a voice. They are not allowed to unionize. They are not allowed to negotiate for, work, for salaries. So we're talking about jobs, but jobs that bring dignity. We are talking about health care. The World Bank has told us that 3.4 billion people who earn $5.5 a day are on the verge, are just a medical bill away from sinking into poverty. They don't have health care. They are just a crop failure away from sinking back into poverty. They have no crop insurance. So don't tell me about low levels of unemployment. You are counting the wrong things. You're not counting dignity of people. You're counting exploited people. I, I want that was a mic drop moment. Now, that CFO of Yahoo gave us some insight into how these elitists and rich people actually think. They claim to be concerned about these issues. He claims to be concerned about inequality, but only tell me how we can fix inequality without raising taxes. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. The crux of the issue of global income and wealth inequality is rich people like him hoarding wealth, oftentimes wealth that they stole from their employees. So it's like, imagine if you saw somebody starving to death on the street and you had a giant uh, plate of food in your hand and they said, help me, I'm starving. And you said, well, tell me how I can help you without giving you food. That's kind of the same thing. Maybe not the best analogy, but you get what I'm saying, right? They don't want their taxes raised. So they virtue signal and pretend to care about these issues that they bring up at these events. But in actuality, they pay politicians. I should say they bribe politicians, donate to their campaigns, hire lobbyists to stop these politicians from implementing policies that would ameliorate some of these issues that they're talking about, like global poverty, anthropogenic climate change, income and wealth inequality. But that's why politicians like Joe Manchin, Kirsten Sinema, and Chris Coons get invited to these private lunches more often than individuals like Rutger Bregman. It's because they tell these elites what they want to hear. They make promises to these elites behind closed doors and never let the media hear what they're saying. And it's because they are indeed plotting and scheming it is a conspiracy but a real conspiracy we're not talking about illuminati we're talking about wealthy and powerful people who control the lovers of government either by proxy of their puppeteer or puppet politicians i should say as they be the puppeteers or by just being members of powerful governments themselves so it's important that we point this out every single time davos has an event because it's disgusting and elitist, and all of these rich pricks know exactly what needs to happen if they want to solve these issues that they're addressing here. It's called tax the rich. But if they keep passing policies that devastate the working class and keep the needy hungry, well then poor folks and working people aren't going to have anything left to eat but the rich. So they should be mindful of this fact.